Hey everybody, Mark Dawes here. Now this video is about physical restraint instructor or physical intervention instructor, PMVA, positive handling trainer, recertification. And I want to pose a hypothetical problem to you. Let's say that you are an organization and you have your system of PMVA or positive handling or whatever it is, physical intervention, that you've developed over the years and it works and it's fit for purpose for your industry sector, for your organization. And let's say that you have a stable of trainers who deliver that training. And over the years, those trainers have delivered numerous courses in, in that to various members of staff or agencies that you are associated with. But this problem occurs. And the problem is, is that the training provider that has refreshed your staff on a regular basis, refreshed your trainers, should I say, on a regular basis, is, is no longer trading, or you no longer have a relationship with them. So you still have the system of work that you've developed, and that's yours. You still have your stable of trainers, but you can't get them refreshed. You can't get them recertificated. The historical way of dealing with this is to take your trainers and go to another training provider like us or one of the many training providers out there who run instructor training programs and get them trained in that system. That then gives you another problem. They come back with a completely different methodology or a different strategic approach to delivering it, different skills even, different techniques, even different names of techniques and different documentation. So everything has to change. The documentation has to change. All the staff have to be retrained. They have to learn different names of different techniques and learn different techniques, and it, and it goes on. And for some organizations, this is a monumental and mammoth problem, and it costs a lot of time and uses up a lot of resources. So my sort of question is, why can't that stay the same? If the consistency is the program and the program is fit for purpose and it's been delivered over years by a stable of trainers, why does that have to change? Why, why do we need to change it? So I've been thinking about this and I've been working with one organization on this, you know, and we've put a, we've, we've put a suggestion to them, which they think is actually quite good. And I want to share it with you. This is what we propose doing. Instead of them coming to us and being retrained in our system and then having to go back and do all this stuff, what we've said to them is this. We said, look, your system of work works for you. Your trainers teach that system of work. Great. What we're going to do is we're going to carry out a process of revalidation and reassessment of your trainers delivering your system. So we're going to look at the, the system you deliver, and we're going to work with your trainers and you, the management of the organization, in collaboration. We're going to work cooperatively. And this might sound mad, but this is actually what health and safety legislation requires you to do anyway. So we'll look at what they deliver and how they deliver it. We're going to look at the skills you teach, and we're going to see whether those skills can be improved upon. We're going to look at anything you might need to do, like a medical review, for example, and if so, we'll recommend you do one. So the point I'm making with this is, is we're not getting system specific here. Okay, we're working with their system. Okay, the one that they've developed. We're going to look at the way the trainers deliver the training. We're going to look at how they teach, what their justification is for teaching that way. We're going to look at how they assess the people they teach and their justification for their assessment decisions. We're going to do peer reviews and evaluation with them. So we're going to do a process of initial, ongoing formative, and summative assessments with them. And at the end of that process, providing it's worked okay, of course, we will recertificate your trainers in your system on the basis that we have carried out a thorough audit, assessment, validation uh, approach of everything they do. So what we are saying is, is yes, we are happy that your trainers are more than competent to deliver your system of work. So we're not teaching them any new skills. We're not making them do our system. We're just validating the fact that they can do that and we will issue an NFPS level three instructor certificate to them on the basis that, that they are instructing their system of work, not ours. Now, when we mentioned this, this organization, they thought it was groundbreaking. And I have taken the liberty of talking to a few peers in, in, in our industry sector, and they think it's absolutely an epiphany. Because why would you want to take someone who's using a system that works and make them implement another one just for the sake of getting a tick in the box and a certificate? It doesn't make any sense. It breaches health and safety. And for far too long, the industry has relied on the fact that you must have a certificate from this training provider if you're doing that system. Now, what I am, am saying is this is a process, okay? This is not us judging the system. We're not gonna do that, okay? So we're not, we're just not, it's not right to do that. We are making the trainers tell us how they justify teaching and assessing that system and why that system is fit for purpose in their place of work. 
we're not trying to take over that system. Not interested, okay? Not interested at all. All we're doing, once again, is going through a process of validating those trainers so that they can make the decisions to justify why they are using the skills and techniques they're using. So there's a justification process to it. They're justifying their teaching approach and they're justifying their assessment decisions. And this will all be closed loop with some of the evaluations and reviews that we'll be doing with them. So we actually have an HSG 65, if you like, a health and safety compliant, systematic and strategic review of training going on in the parent organization with the system they use by the staff that use it. And we're just acting as independent external validators of that. So that's what we proposed. Now, the amount of money it's going to save this organization is absolutely immense. They haven't got to implement a new system. They haven't got to undo probably 10 years or more of work. They haven't got to do it. They can keep their own system. They can keep their own system. They haven't got to change the names of the techniques that they're, they're, they're actually using. They haven't got to change any documentation. But as part of this process, as this develops, we will be looking at ways of improving everything they do. So you have a continual professional development approach for the system and for the trainers. Now, if you are an organization and you're in that position right now, and COVID has created a lot of this for people, you know, for a lot for organizations, COVID means you can't go and do refreshers. Now, if you can't go and refresh your trainers, your trainers can't go and refresh the staff or they fall out of date and they're refreshing staff with no way of validating their CPD or their competence, then you have a couple of issues. One is, is if training is not taking place, then you're falling foul of compliance. Your compliance figures are dropping, which means that there is a gap in competence. And if someone gets hurt or injured or God forbid killed, you have a massive health and safety issue with that in terms of liability and probably other legalities going on with that as well. This helps resolve all of that without having to change the core system. Now, I'd be interested in your views on this. Like I said, I've run it through a couple of peers in, in, uh, in my industry sector. They think it's, it's, it's brilliant. And I don't mean to blow smoke up anyone's backside. And it's not me that's thought of this, by the way. There's a whole team approach to this. Okay. But it is a bit of an epiphany moment because it's doing what should have always been done. Now, when Travel Henry and Eric Baskin and Tony Bleat and I have done webinars on this, we've always said this. You know, what health and safety legislation requires is that you make whatever you do fit for purpose for your place of work. Because there is a misconception out there that if you use a certain training provider to teach you a certain system, if that goes wrong, the training provider is liable. Not at all. If you don't do your due diligence when you bring that training provider in, and if you don't tweak the system and adapt the system and make that system fit for purpose for your place of work, you as the organization are liable. You always have been. This reduces and uh, removes your liability because you're going through this formal process of validation, of recertification, of assessment, and of strategic overview. Okay, It does everything that's required by law. And because it will then develop with time, and it will improve with time, once again, you're showing good continual professional development. You're sh showing an evolution of your own system within your own place of work. That's something you take ownership of. And it's going to be a lot, lot cheaper than having to change systems every few years i hope that that sounds interesting to you i'll be really interested in your comments so please leave me a comment below let me know what you think and if you are an organization and you're stuck in this position at this moment in time get in touch we'd be delighted to help i mean we've just you know we're doing this with a school at the moment and, and we've had other schools come to us because it works in those environments they haven't got to go away and get some external person to come and do this for them oh and on that point by the way you know if you are relying on a training provider to do all this for you Check their, check their qualifications. Make sure they have trainer qualifications, assessment qualifications. Because all too often, training providers issue a certificate from the organization, but the people who've been assessing you and are training you may not have even a teacher's qualification, let alone a teacher's or assessor's qualification. And, you know, the world's changing. People need to be qualified to teach and competent to teach and qualified to assess and competent to assess. This process will absolutely revolutionize the way things are going to be done without having to change the world. OK, I hope that helps. I'd really be interested in your comments and feedback on this one. Um, and, if, and if you want to talk, you know, drop me a line. Let's have a chat. I'm more than happy to speak to you. And if I can help your organization in any way, you know, let me know.